there may be a positive correlation, albeit based upon credible but limited evidence, between this type of electromagnetic radiation and certain forms of cancers known as gliomas and acoustic neuromas. But again, the important point here is that this is indeed correlation. And what is critical to understand is that correlation does not imply causation. The International Agency for Research on Cancer of the World Health Organization has classified this type of electromagnetic pulse radiation as Group 2b, which suggests that there is a positive, albeit limited, amount of information to suggest there is a correlation between this type of radiation and certain forms of cancers. Now, in this group 2b exist a variety of other substances, including things like pickled fruits and vegetables, automotive emissions gases, low levels of pesticides that we encounter on a daily basis. In sum, I think there are three important points that need to be taken from this study and these findings. First is that any substance that is categorized as group 2b is shown to have some positive correlation based upon limited evidence between the agent or a variable of the agent, in this case, radiofrequency electromagnetic pulse radiation, and certain forms of cancer, in this case, gliomas and acoustic neuromas. What that suggests is that more research needs to be done to further explicate and elucidate mechanisms, vulnerabilities, and what types of interactions are viable, possible, and real. Second is that, indeed, this would suggest that although a correlation is there and does not suggest causality, that we should be prudent in our use of these techniques, these variables, and so forth. In this case, prudent in our use of cell phones. And third is that there are vulnerable populations that may be at somewhat greater risk. And I think one of the important points that comes to the fore here is that children may be somewhat more vulnerable and therefore greater risk. And there are three reasons for this. First is that the thickness of the skull during development in childhood may be not as great as it is in adulthood, and as a consequence, more of this form of radiation may actually penetrate into the brain space where there is an increased vulnerability of the cells. This then speaks to the second point, that the brain is a plastic organ, it is developing, and this developmental window is more open during particular periods of childhood. And as a consequence, the interaction of this type of electromagnetic pulse radiation with the developing brain, specifically glial cells, these accessory cells that facilitate brain development and metabolism, may prove to be somewhat of a more strongly interactive variable. And third, of course, childhood use would suggest a longer period of overall use. Parents should recognize that this is not a proscription against cell phone use altogether, but that a bit of caution and a bit of prudence is probably warranted until either further information comes out or until the mechanisms are more closely defined.